What's behind North Korea's latest missile tests? Pyongyang has launched six rockets in two weeks, including one that flew over Japan. What message is North Korea sending and how should the international community respond? This is Inside Story. Hello there and welcome to the programme. I'm Laura Kyle. North Korea has dramatically increased the number of its missile tests. It's conducted six in just 12 days, including the first intermediate-range ballistic missile test in five years. It landed in the Sea of Japan on Tuesday. Well, that launch prompted the Japanese government to warn people to seek shelter. The US, Japanese and South Korean militaries responded with live-fire drills a day later. And the Pentagon repositioned an aircraft carrier off the Korean peninsula. Pyongyang reacted by launching two more missiles on Thursday and sending fighter jets near its border with South Korea. In a phone call, the Japanese and South Korean leaders condemned the military escalation. The Pentagon says the latest tests pose a serious threat to the region's stability. Clearly, uh, North Korea is testing its missile program. Uh, it's looking to adapt. Uh, and uh, the issue here, though, is that these actions are provocative, uh, they're dangerous, and uh, as you well know, North Korea has not committed to any type of constructive or strategic dialogue on these issues. Well, at the UN Security Council, the U.S. accused China and Russia of enabling North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un by blocking further sanctions. But Beijing said it is Washington that's provoking Pyongyang. On the nuclear issue, the U.S. is playing by a double standard and is engaged in political maneuvering, poisoning the security environment. Against this backdrop, the heightened tension on the peninsula should not come as a surprise. Well, the missile tests have increased fears that North Korea will soon conduct another nuclear test. The U.S.-based Center for Strategic and International Studies released these satellite images of the Pungi ri test site from late September. Analysts say they show work on a tunnel which could be part of an expansion of testing capabilities. The UN is tracking North Korea's ballistic missile tests and says it has carried out around 40 this year. That's a record number. In the past 40 years, Pyongyang has conducted more than 200 missile launches and six nuclear tests. And more than half of those have been since Kim Jong-un came to power. Let's bring in our guests now to discuss this further. And in Seoul, we have Uk Yang, a fellow at the Asan Institute for Policy Studies. In Tokyo, Alistair Morgan, a professor at the University of Tokyo and a former British ambassador to North Korea. And in Washington, D.C., Mark Fitzpatrick, a fellow at the International Institute for Strategic Studies and a former Deputy U.S. Assistant Secretary of State. A very warm welcome to all of you. Let's start by looking at the timing of these tests. Okyang, why are we seeing this barrage of missile tests now? Yeah, I mean, we have to see the context. Uh, well, as you see, uh, the last September, uh, North Korea announced uh, its uh, Nuclear Force Policy Act, and the, the law describes the uh, UN aggressive uh, nuclear doctrine uh, that Kim Jong-un has been claiming since the April military parade this year. And it is intended to signal US and South Korea that uh, their nuclear forces, and forces are now uh, operational. And uh, by shooting all these missiles, uh, they say that, I mean, they are ready. Alistair, how concerning is it for Japan that this intermediate-range ballistic missile flew, first of all, over its land, but second of all, it was unannounced? Well, I think uh, the fact that it is unannounced is a concern for everybody. Uh, there's an obligation to announce missile launches, which the DPRK uh, always ignores. Uh, in terms of Japan, clearly it gave rise to uh, 
notices to, to citizens in northern Japan and some other places uh, that the missile was flown over. Clearly, the, the, the missile went beyond Japan mm. and the range of the missile uh, was probably intended to demonstrate a capability to reach Guam. Uh, but uh, Japan, as a neighbor of North Korea, is well aware that there are systems in North Korea that can strike uh, Japan. Uh, and the nuclear posture that the North Koreans have announced makes it clear that if uh, other non-nuclear powers are associated with a nuclear power in any action against the DPRK, then they can become targets as well. So, of course, it's a reason for particular concern for Japan. Absolutely. And, and how much of a concern, Mark, is it for the US? I mean, is this Kim Jong-un testing Biden? Well, the United States is certainly concerned with the growing um, modernization and expansion of North Korea's uh, nuclear program. Uh, a nuclear weapon surely could hit in the uh, surely could fit in the nose cone of the missile that was just launched. And the fact that this uh, the trajectory of the missile launch was more normal than the than the previous tests that went up and then then down. Uh, North Korea is. Um, uh, refining its uh, ability to hit uh, U.S. bases. Uh, and the uh, United States is firm in its defense of uh, Japan and South Korea, but uh, aware that North Korea is trying to say that uh, if there's a conflict on the Korean peninsula, uh, that North Korea would try to uh, warn the U.S. off by saying that it could hit uh, any U.S. Uh, cities or bases uh, if the United States were to be in, engaged in such a conflict. I don't think the United States will be, uh, de you know, will be deterred by that, but it is certainly an escalation. Mm, and it's worth noting, isn't it, Mark, that this is not the longest-range missile that North Korea has in its arsenal? No, they've got uh, inter <laughs> intercontinental ballistic missiles they successfully tested in 2017, and I expect that uh, we will see another such uh, uh, test of an ICBM in the coming months. Is that the feeling, Ukyang, in, in South Korea? Just give us an idea of what the policy there is uh, from the current government towards the North. Yeah, I mean, uh, the uh, South Korean government is trying to, you know, uh, deter the uh, North Korean provocation. And I mean, uh, while well, we are we are trying to you know do much more you know uh, aggressive stance. Uh, well, uh, for for example, uh, yesterday uh, North Korea uh, did a uh, air, air ground uh, exercise with its you know uh, uh, fighter and bomber plane, and our air force launched like uh, thirty uh, fighters uh, to you know. Uh, intercept any, you know, threat. I'm just trying to get an idea of what, the, what Yoon suk Yeol feels towards. What is his policy towards the North? Because, of course, his predecessor attempted engagement and that didn't get very far. So what is this current government's approach? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, we, are, we are trying to do, you know, both uh, talk and, you know, deal with, uh, you know, any threat. The things like this, I mean, uh, the President Yoon uh, uh, clearly said that if North Korea wants to, you know, talk to us and we will, you know, provide any help North Korea need. I mean, the uh, President Yoon called it the audacious initiative, uh, well, which includes a, a, a lot of, uh, well, you know, support and only if uh, North Korea is, you know, uh, coming to the uh, negotiation. But, I mean, when North Korea tried to uh, this kind of provocation, and uh, South Korea will stand firm with U.S. And also, as you see, uh, the, uh, well, what is really different from the previous government is that Korea is now working also with Japan. Mm. I mean, U.S. always has been a big supporter for the uh, trilateral cooperation, but well, South Korean government has its own, you know, a problem. But uh, President Yoon, I mean, I mean, he did uh, this, you know, initiative. Is there 
Alistair, enough international cooperation on this? I mean, remember back to the times of the six-party talks on denuclearization, where there was a united front dealing with North Korea. Now it appears to be so fractured. How much coordination is there and, and what more is needed? Well, I would just like to pick up the point that was made about cooperation between Japan and the Republic of Korea. And mm -hmm. I think uh, that is that is important. And in terms of deterrence of North Korea, clearly uh, underlining the what's often called the ironclad nature of the US alliance with Japan, with the Republic of Korea is important. Looking at the wider international community, uh, there have been, there's an obligation on every member state to implement the United Nations Security Council sanctions, and there has been much action by many member states. But uh, as is very obvious at the moment, there is polarization on the Security Council, mm. and uh, there is not the unanimity that there was uh, in, for instance, decision making on introducing further sanctions uh, in the Security Council. In terms of what is needed, uh, clearly an effective Security Council is vital for this issue and for many uh, issues uh, in international peace and security. And it's a major concern uh, that the, uh, the, the, the unity is not there. Uh, I don't believe that any uh, actual further coalition of uh, international member states is going to deter uh, North Korea from its determination to maintain its ballistic missile programs and its nuclear programs. But nevertheless, the coordination is still required to ensure uh, that the deterrent effect is there and uh, that sanctions bite and the, the message is sent not just to North Korea, uh, but to other countries as well. Uh, but, but why is that, Alistair? If, 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 this, if there was unity on further sanctions, but they didn't make any difference, what would be the point? I didn't say it wouldn't make any difference. I said I don't, didn't think it would change the determination of uh, the DPRK to maintain its, uh, its programmes. I think that in the long run, uh, maintaining sanctions and actually uh, enforcing more effectively the current sanctions and indeed should the Security Council decide applying new sanctions does increase the pressure on the DPRK. The DPRK, in my view, cannot achieve any real meaningful economic growth uh, under the sanctions, even though actually it has in effect sanctioned itself with its with its COVID, COVID measures. Mm. And that, that in the long run does have an impact and actually uh, creates a pressure that uh, it can then be used for diplomacy. But at the moment, as Mark said, there is no indication uh, that the DPRK is ready to respond to, to the overtures for diplomacy. I'd also say that, 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 that sanctions actually can delay uh, the, the, the continued rollout of the programme, even though it's very clear uh, that the DPRK has reached uh, a high level of, of, of development and has high levels of indigenous capacity. Mm. I think we've seen in the past, haven't we, Mark, that sanctions only really work when China is fully on board, because, of course, they supply an awful lot of uh, fuel and food to the DPRK. To what extent is the US coordinating or able to coordinate with China on this front? Well, we're not able to coordinate at all. Mm. China and Russia have refused uh, uh, new UN sanctions. Uh, they refused earlier this year. And uh, China has really relaxed its uh, implementation of existing sanctions. So given um, all the... Um, areas in which the United States and China are at odds. China is in no mood to cooperate with the United States on, uh, uh, with regard to North Korea. So I don't, I don't think we uh, can really expect much there. If, if, if I may you know, say, if we're looking at other you know, tools in the toolbox, there's one I think that might actually be effective, uh, at least in, not immediately, but that is 
you know, we talk about sending messages. Let's send an actual message to North Korea. Um, in the past, uh, several years ago, South Korea was very effective when it turned down, he, turned down huge um, loudspeakers along the border uh, of the DMZ and broadcast uh, 10 kilometers into North Korea. Uh, messages uh, about the, you know, the corruption of the regime, interspaced with acute, you know, K-pop songs, uh, cute girls and so forth. My understanding of talking with a North Korean defector once is this had a real uh, impact in, in North Korea. And it's, it's one way, you know, that uh, we can do something that's not at all lethal, uh, but could, you know, make the other side listen, uh, you know, physically and, and uh, metaphorically listen. Absolutely. Well, they, they could hardly not listen to it, could they? I mean, OK, what, what do you think of that idea? Is it a viable one? Is it something that the South Korean government there is actually entertaining? Yeah, well, actually, uh, the idea uh, that, you know, let the uh, North Korean people know uh, the real uh, situation is really important. Uh, but, I mean, well, I'm not, uh, I don't think that, that uh, the, the broadcast near the DMZ is enough. Uh, I mean, uh, well, as, we, as you see in the, uh, the Ukrainian war, I mean, the, uh, the internet service can affect, you know, all countries. So what I think that, I mean, if we provide the free internet and, you know, what, like a free device that uh, they can connect to, maybe, I mean, that will, you know, bring down this, you know, uh, dictator legend. Uh, so how, what is the state of life for people inside North Korea? I mean, Kim Jong-un, he declared success over COVID two months ago. Do we, how much do we know about the economic situation and the social situation for people there now? Well, not as much as uh, we would like to know. Uh, I myself was last there in 2018, mm. and the British Embassy, like many of the other uh, European embassies, all the other European embassies, and many other embassies, uh, closed in, in 2020, with plans to reopen again. So the sort of information that was coming out from North Korea through the observations of diplomats in the country and through the observations of uh, UN and other uh, aid workers in the country has uh, largely dried up, though some embassies remain there. I mean, it, it seems very likely that the, uh, the, the situation is poor uh, and that the, there are unknown numbers of deaths really from uh, COVID-19. Of course, in suffering deaths from COVID-19, North Korea is by no means alone. Uh, and probably the level of uh, food sufficiency is uh, very, very low at the moment, and economic activity is low at the moment. But whether this is at the level of severe severity that was seen in uh, the, the second half of the 1990s, which, of course, the regime managed to survive, uh, is not clear. I hope it isn't, and I think it probably isn't. Uh, but the, the situation is not good. In terms of information access, there is less access to information now uh, than there was a few years ago because of the closed borders uh, between the, the DPRK and China and the rest of the world. And so how much then is this, are these tests a message to the domestic audience or, or indeed a distraction for the domestic audience from their living situations? Well, I think you can have different views on that. I do believe that the, uh, the, the program of uh, ballistic missile launches, ballistic missile development, and nuclear weapons development uh, is essentially a military program and a deterrent program. Clearly, at times, there are announcements of individual tests which uh, are used uh, for internal propaganda purposes. Uh, I think the existence of the image of an external enemy is important for the regime in its management of the people. But I don't think that these latest tests, the, the, the tests in the last two weeks, uh, are primarily aimed uh, at distracting the people of the DPRK. Mm, okay. If that were the intention, of the leadership, I think they would have done more to uh, put out information about them in their own 
media and propaganda sources. They've okay. been remarkably silent about them. Mark, the last time we saw this many missile tests was in 2017. Then, of course, we had a nuclear test. Uh, at the end, towards the end of that year. A lot of talk about another a seventh nuclear test. What's your theory on that and when it might happen? Because there are, of course, some key global dates uh, coming up. We've got China's Communist Party Congress. We've got the US midterm elections. We've got North Korea's Workers' Party anniversary. Do you have any theories as to when, if this might happen? Well, I... I... I, I don't have any theories that are better than the uh, the theories being um, discussed in South Korea, where there's a view that um, uh, a test during the uh, upcoming Workers' Party Congress is the most likely time frame. So I think that's uh, uh, maybe the middle of October or, or you know, in the weeks thereafter. I've been expecting a, another nuclear test for some time, and the indications are that uh, the site has been prepared uh, for it. Uh, uh, you know, I think... It, when it's imminent, we will get more information. We have very good uh, satellite coverage of, of that site and some very good analysts who can look at it and tell us what's happening. I haven't seen that yet, but uh, I expect we will. I think before the end of the year, we're, we're going to get a nuclear test. Mm. We're probably going to get an ICBM test. And uh, things are going to just get more and more tense. And, Ok Young, is there a, a planned South Korean response to this? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, well, our uh, uh, National Security Council, I mean, I mean they are uh, uh, trying, you know, every inch to figure out if there's any, you know, sign of uh, nuclear test. And I mean, uh, they have a, a lots of a plan, I mean, including military and, and diplomacy, uh, diplomacy, I mean, uh, to uh, deal with the uh, situation after the North Korea has done uh, this test. I mean, uh, but, uh, well, actually, the uh, our uh, the government's position is is that I mean, we we will you know do uh, every you know possible uh, uh, measure uh, you know after North Korea uh, did this you know uh, nuclear nuclear test and and we will stand firm and working with the U.S. and uh, Japan. What would that look like, Alistair? What would that response be? I'm not sure what the uh, what what the particular measures would be. I mean, I think you can look at uh, measures that can be taken in in, in response to the the ballistic missile program. Uh, increased emphasis on uh, cooperation. Uh, looking again at the. Uh, deterrence and detection and deterrence uh, tools. Uh, I am sure that the uh, that United States, France, uh, the United Kingdom, and other members of the uh, Security Council, other than uh, Russia and China, will work hard to get a new resolution in the Security Council if there is a nuclear test. Mm. Uh, I would hope that they would succeed, but it's hard to be optimistic. At the moment, I mean, clearly, uh, member states can take uh, autonomous uh, measures uh, in relation to sanctions. And if the UN at the Security Council level is paralysed, then they may well do so. And there's scope, of course, for secondary sanctions uh, against uh, China, uh, should member okay. states decide that that is called for. Just, uh, Mark, just last thought from you in the last 30 seconds we have. What does North Korea want from all this? They want protection against what they view as a potential attack uh, on their country. They're wrong about that. Uh, they're wrong about who started the Korean War. But they want to defend themselves. And they also want to be treated, uh, you know, to see themselves as an equal of the United States. They loved it when President Donald Trump uh, mm. spoke with their president. I think it was a failed opportunity that that uh, uh, leadership uh, summit didn't result in any uh, deals. We, we could have had something, and uh, both sides asked for too much. OK, fantastic. Thank you very much, all of you, for joining us. Ok Young, Alistair Morgan and Mark Fitzpatrick. And thank you, too, for watching. You can see the programme again anytime by visiting our website. That's aljazeera.com. For further discussion, do go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. We're at AJ Inside Story.
from me, Laura Kyle, and the whole team here, it's bye for now.